follow your bidding. Welcome back to my dark corner of this sick world. Now, now, darling, no need to be bitchy. Devils of Darkness, I'm informed, is the first British film to bring vampires into the present day, predating Hammer's Dracula AD 1972 by five years. And, although it's made at the peak of Hammer's popularity, it draws more on the gothic European horrors that I particularly love. And, in fact, opens in 17th century France, with a vampire being resurrected. All it took was a candle? You are phoning in the ritual. Having left his grave in the form of a rubber bat... Ah, oh dear, oh dear. Count Sinistre, who wins the Dark Corners Doctor Doom Award for obvious bad guy names, claims his new bride. Awaken. Rise from your sleep. Using some bat-shaped bling. This talisman that sets me above everyone. Now the action jumps to the present day and to a party of English tourists. Some going caving, others observing the local night of all souls. And what a marvellous setting for a story. Potentially, yes, as the cavers enter the wrong cave. While on the surface, it's time for another classic Dark Corners breakout character, the Sudden Gypsy. I don't... No! No! We love a prophet of doom. It is too late. The Black Death is upon you. She's only in this one scene, but we will remember her. The cavers are found dead. Nothing can be done, I'm afraid. By the vampire couple though they may have drifted apart over the centuries as the Count comforts the dead man's sister. If only I could do something to lessen your grief. In France, the first stage of grief is doggy style. Oh, please, let me help you erase this unhappy memory. It has been months since my wife and I erased anything. He takes Anne for a walk. There's a fragrance, sir. Sickly fragrance that reminds me of death. Thank you, it is from Calvin Klein. But when Anne resists... <coughs> her friend Paul badgers the police to look for her, but alas... Monsieur, her body was discovered in the lake. It seems she took her own life. That's how you tell someone their friend is dead? I don't believe it. That's how you react to your friend being dead? But Sinistre has a problem. During the struggle with Anne, he lost his talisman and... The all-powerful symbol that protects us must be restored. So he and his wife Tanya follow Paul to England. They must be out of their tiny minds. Here's the problem with this film. Partway through, we get to see the Count's entry in The Vampire Who's Who engaged in all manner of perversity and evil, claimed his victims by hypnotic sorcery, accused of being a vampire and buried alive. The creed of his initiates was to gain limitless power over God, demon and man. I want to see that film, not the one where Count Sinistra goes hunting for his lost jewellery and has a domestic. You did not tell her that you had a wife. Still, you'd think there was enough to keep the plot ticking over as Paul attends a with it party. Oh, very dolly. Down, boy. Go on, darling. Mix and mingle. Meets a pretty girl and drops his best chat up line. I cook in a non stick frying pan. This is Karen, who is also Sinistra's model. Oh, I'm dying for a drink. How about you? Because as long as you're looking for the talisman that gives you power, you may as well get some work done. And it's her who's making Tanya jealous. You know the reason why this girl was chosen. She will be the hostage. The talisman must be given back to us. It's all about the talisman, and this is definitely the most direct route to getting it back. <laughs> Could just grab him by the throat and shake him till he tells you where it is, but practical jokes are an equally valid option if you're not in a hurry. I must have the talisman by sunset tomorrow. It is so urgent, 
I cannot even take the time to explain why. He puts his hostage plan into action. Karen's been kidnapped. The medallion is the ransom. But Paul isn't falling for that. Sorry, Madeline, but I've got to do this my way. I'm going to sleep on it. She'll be fine. As he sleeps, the jealous Tanya breaks in and... <laughs> Striking image, but I've no idea what it means. Should have brought a pen. Her note is written on the back of the Count's CV that I mentioned earlier, and Paul calls the police. And I certainly never believed in black magic until now. This piece of paper is all the evidence I need. It's black magic, all right. They race to the stately home where Karen is about to become Sinistra's next bride. All right. Presumably, this is what he needed the talisman for. He still doesn't have it, but they're going ahead anyway because... You know, we're all here now, may as well. But it turns out that Karen is damaged goods. No! She cannot be yours! Look! She has a mark of the cross. Following a scene earlier that I didn't really follow. Where did that come from? Paul and the detective storm in. But it's two against ten, so I don't like their chances. Well, that's bad luck. Sinistra flees with Karen. Again, very bad luck, but just take a step to the right. Purely from a narrative standpoint, you want your lead character to have some impact on bringing the bad guy down. Sinistra is beaten by the weather. And Karen's apparently fine. Can't touch crosses, but that's nothing that needs clearing up. Bottom line, and putting aside all the actual problems, this film is no fun. It can't hold up to the Euro horrors it's aping, and it's not even on a par with Dracula AD 1972, which, for all its flaws, is a laugh. But that is nonsense, monsieur. One thing I will say about it, it makes you realise the unexpected crossover between cult ritual and beatnik happening. Could be either. Couldn't tell you. Thanks for watching. I understand you are a writer, monsieur. Well, I don't like to talk about it, but since you bring it up, I do have a vampire book that you can buy on Amazon. There's a link in the description below. What are your favourite present-day vampire movies? Let us know in the comments below. Hey, you want to go? I'd love to. All right, I'll get my coat. Well, bring mine too, will you?